Hurricane Idalia tapped into extremely warm waters in the Gulf as it charged toward Florida's Big Bend region. I mean, and Idalia, as, as we had said, it underwent this rapid intensification. But that occurred right before it slammed into the coast. Forecasts, they use this term to describe storms that have about a 35 mile per hour wind increase in just 24 hours. But get this, Idalia's wind strengthened 45 miles per hour in that same time period, 24 hours. Idalia now joins a list, a growing list of hurricanes that experience impressive strengthening before making landfall in the United States. Former hurricane hunter and meteorologist Jeff Masters from Yale Climate Connections joins us now. Uh, Jeff, good morning to you. These strong hurricanes are not necessarily a new phenomenon, but there is a trend that's being observed. And let's get right into it. It's, it's important to note uh, when we look at these, this one that was a 45 mile per hour increase in just 24 hours, this rapid intensification is happening leading up to a landfall. It's not like we're seeing this in the middle of the Atlantic. Yeah, that's problematic because people may not be prepared for the landfall of a much stronger storm than originally forecast. And it's very hard to forecast these rapid intensifiers. We're getting better at it, but but by gosh, yeah, 45 miles per hour in 24 hours. Actually, it was a little bit more than that, but it weakened by five miles per hour before landfall. So very uh, stressful situation for the forecasters and the population in harm's way. That's a that's a good point, too. Yeah, it, it started to go under that uh, eyewall replacement cycle. And, and so that broadened out that wind field just a bit. And we saw even the category drop down one before landfall, still a major one. But one thing that we had noted this Atlantic hurricane season have been these abnormally warm sea surface temperatures, in some cases historically warm. When we look at the future, is this something that's just going to be more common? I mean, are we seeing more of a favor toward warmer sea surface temperatures as we head into these summer months in the Northern Hemisphere? Well, absolutely. I mean, you've got the long-term global warming trend, which has increased global sea surface temperatures by about a degree centigrade. And then you've got regional differences too. Uh, so about half of the heat that was in the Gulf of Mexico this summer, the abnormal heat was due to long-term climate change. The other half was due to regional weather patterns. We had very light winds and unusually weak Bermuda high this year and very uh, strong heat wave with a lot of sunshine to help warm up the Gulf. But if we look at theory and modeling, it shows the Gulf should warm by even more than that in the coming hundred years or so due to some changes in the current system there. So you'll get the background warming from global warming in combination with this regional effect. We're expecting sea surface temperatures in the Gulf to increase by, oh, maybe a degree or two centigrade in the next 100 years. And that's enough to make a hurricane, you know, 10% stronger on landfall. And that's a, about a factor of two increase in the destructive potential. We look at just that Gulf Coast, the, the vulnerable Gulf Coast, and it was the Big Bend region in this modern era that had really been spared. You've got to go back to the late 1800s to see when the last time a major hurricane struck that region. But now that gap, in essence, has been filled. And speaking of the gap, there was uh, excellent forecasting, the Hurricane Center noting where this landfall m might occur well before we even had Edalia form. But, uh, but Jeff, you had mentioned the intensity and that component, I think, is such a striking uh, parameter of, of forecasting. It's tough to predict. Intensity forecasts are notoriously. So how can we go about improving it, especially when we consider these, these sea surface temperatures? I mean, the location, Hurricane Center nailed. That, that strengthening, we all were, were waiting kind of understanding, hey, the Gulf of Mexico is hot, we'll probably see a major hurricane out of that. But that came just a bit later. We need more data. I mean, uh, scientists always love to have more data, and we certainly need it in this case, particularly out over the ocean, because there aren't a lot of observing sites. I mean, we have buoys, but they're very scattered. We need better hurricane hunter planes, and by gosh, we're going to get one of those. In two years, NOAA is supposed to get a new jet which will fly even higher, even faster, have the latest Doppler radar on it, that's gonna help. We also have new drone technology coming on. There are these sail drones that go out and take data. That data's not going into the models yet, but I think it will shortly. And also aerial release drones, they can release those from the uh, NOAA P3 Hurricane Hunters. So all of these new platforms are needed and they should help a lot with our intensity forecasts. In addition to 
better models are coming on board too. I mean, the future does look bright as from a forecasting perspective, and let's keep that trend going. I mean, especially with the new issuance this season of that seven day outlook that we have from the National Hurricane Center. Appreciate the insight. Always great talking with you, meteorologist Jeff Masters from Yale Climate Connections. Thank you. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.